Hello everyone, today we will be talking about a very important topic, seizure. And first, what seizures are? Seizures are usually caused because of abnormal brain's electrical activity. And like in this figure, we see that uh, when there is a normal resting brain, there is no spike as such on the EEG, and when the brain is seizing, there are a lot of spikes and the EEG differs between the different type of seizures, which we will be discussing in this lecture. So um, there, there are a lot, of, a lot of causes of seizures. A lot of things can cause seizure. And usually seizure is actually a symptom rather than a pathology. So the different causes could include um, electrolyte disturbances such as hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia, hyponatremia, water intoxication, just to name a few. And then there could be mass lesions, such as a tumor in the brain, which can also cause seizures. There could also be um, a patient who, who is an epileptic patient who has been missing his drugs. That can cause seizure. And there could also be seizure from withdrawal from alcohol or benzodiazepines or even barbiturates. Seizures could also happen if someone is taking drugs, such as... Um, cocaine, lithium, theophylline, to just name a few. And uh, maybe if someone has, a patient has infections, such as uh, meningitis, encephalitis, or even a septic shock. And ischemia can also cause seizure, like we see in stroke or TIA, and also increase ICP due to any mass lesion or even due to trauma. So there are a lot of multiple causes of seizures. And like I mentioned, seizure is a symptom rather than a pathology. And in this lecture, we will be discussing different types of seizures. We will be looking at different types of EEG. And we will be also discussing the treatments available for different types of seizures. So now moving on to the classification of seizures. So now seizure activity can be uh, categorized into two groups. One being generalized, where the whole um, brain is involved, i.e. the both hemispheres and the other being partial, where there is just the focal uh, area involved. So again, like it says, it appears, uh, generalized appears to involve both hemispheres of the brain, and whereas partial appears uh, limited to part of one hemisphere in brain. Now partial can be further divided into three groups. This is simple partial, partial seizures with generalization, and complex partial seizures. So it's very uh, easy to identify simple partial seizures. Why? Because the patient will not lose consciousness. Where in the other seizures, they will, there will be loss of consciousness. And in simple partial seizures, looking more into it, that now there might be a, a feeling of familiarity, such as the patient might feel deja vu or have an aura or even have uh, an olfactory hallucination. And let me give you an example, such as the patient might um, smell something burning before he starts to seize. So that's an olfactory hallucination. And patient may remember the event very well. Now coming to complex partial seizure. Now again, there is loss of consciousness in this and the patient can again have aura, but there is a very peculiar characteristic of complex partial seizure. And this is called uh, the motor automatisms. And this is basically, while patient is see seizing, he can have these actions accompanying his seizure. That could be chewing, swallowing, sucking. Such actions are called motor automatisms. And sometimes the motor findings could also be bilateral. Now coming to the midsection of this uh, seizure, the last classification, that's called the partial seizure with generalization. Now this is when your partial seizures goes on to being a generalized seizures. So now it's no more about the focal, it's more about generalization. So they will sh show tonic-clonic activity, which is not a characteristic of partial seizure. It's more of a generalized seizure. And we will discuss about tonic-clonic in the generalized seizure. Now coming back to um, the major classification, now looking at generalized seizures, there will be loss of consciousness and there will always be bilateral motor findings. They can also be convulsive, such as tonic-clonic, or non-convulsive, such as absence seizure. Now let's quickly summarize each of the seizures we discussed so that we have a better understanding. So the first one is uh, 
under partial seizure and this will be simple partial that we discussed where there was no loss of consciousness, only one part of the body was involved and there was no post-ictal confusion. And post-ictal confusion basically means right after seizure, there is no state where the person or the patient is confused. So he gains consciousness and he is normally acting or behaving. Now the drug of choice for simple partial seizure is a carbamazepine. This is the first line. The next one in the category was complex partial and we discussed that complex partial involved impaired consciousness and over here it says that it always arises from temporal lobe. There could be more changes, illusions and even hallucinations that we discussed as well and post-ictal states are present as well. And first line, again, just like simple partial, is carbamazepine. Coming to generalize, here it's divided into three categories, tonic-clonic, myoclonic, and absence. And tonic-clonic, again, will be more of the motor, so it's bilateral and more motor symptoms. It's generalized tonic extension of the extremities, and it's followed by clonic rhythmic movement. So tonic, when the patient is very stiff, and clonic, when the patient is jerking. So loss of consciousness and prolonged post-ictal confusion are present. So the first uh, line for this is phenytoin, carbamazepine, and valproate. And we will be discussing about uh, management in more detail. So the next one is myoclonic, which is basically there is arrhythmic jerking movements. And like tonic, which had the rhythmic, clonic and tonic movements, this one is arrhythmic and this has jerking movements, which lasts uh, for less than one second and there are usually the occurrent clusters and there is also no loss of consciousness so this can also be added to the um, exception with the simple where there is no loss of consciousness and first line again is valproic, valproic acid and the last one uh, in the category is the absence seizure where there is brief episodes of staring so the child might be just staring and usually the absence seizure is prevalent in children. So they might be sitting in the class and staring uh, with maybe blinking present. And there is no post uh, ictal confusion as well. And first line is ethoseximide, whereas second line is valproic acid. Now as promised, we will be looking at EEGs. So the first one we will be looking at will be partial seizures. So taking a look at normal EEG, we notice that in frontal, temporal, there are no spikes as such. Occipital has few spikes and that's completely normal. Now looking at the partial seizures, we see that there are spikes in the frontal site as well as temporal site. And this is just occurring in one hemisphere. So the first hemisphere is denoted by this line and the second hemisphere is denoted by this line. We see that only first hemisphere which one ever it would be, is affected by the seizure and there are spikes. The second hemisphere is normal. Again, the first hemisphere has spikes. The second one is completely normal. That's how we can differentiate between partial and generalized. Partial is localized to one hemisphere, whereas generalized will have spikes in both hemispheres. So let's look um, at generalized seizures, EEG now. So this is the generalized seizure EEG and we see how the spikes are all over. They are in the frontal and both hemispheres because they are present in, the, in both horizontal lines. And they are also present in temporal and also occipital. So now let's look at um, the absence seizure, how the absence seizure looks, looks like because it's slightly different than your generalized tonic-clonic. So this is the absence seizure and we see that there is a characteristic spike and this is called the three second spike and wave discharge and it's just present for three seconds and this is how it looks like. The spikes are pretty uniform but they are big spikes. So that's how we can differentiate between uh, tonic-clonic, which again, let me show you, looks very haphazard all over the place and compared with absent. That is basically just three second the spikes are pretty uniform. Again, looking at tonic-clonic EEG, this is the normal um, EEG, and then there are spikes, very haphazard, and this is the setting of your tonic phase, which is basically the contraction of the muscle, and then there's the jerking phase, which is the clonic phase, 
and then the EEG tries to return to the normal but not so in the post convulsive coma. Now we will be looking at management of status epilepticus. So status epilepticus basically means when the patient has been seizing for a long, a prolonged period of time, i.e. maybe 5 to 30 minutes, and this patient would need immediate management. The first thing we do in a patient who is seizing is A, B, C, airway, breathing, and circulation. We have to make sure the patient has patent airway. Then we can move forward with medical management. The first thing we infuse patient with is lorazepam. Now at this point, after infusing lorazepam, if the seizure has stopped, then we are good. There's nothing else we need to do. But if the seizure continues, then we have to administer phenytoin or phosphenytoin IV. If again, the patient has stopped seizing, and that's good, but if the seizure continues, we have to administer another dosage of phosphenytoin or phenytoin. If the seizure still continues, we have to give phenobarbital at this point. And again, if the seizure still continues, we have to administer another dosage of phenobarbital. And if it still continues, then we have to resort to anesthesia with perhaps midazolam, pentobarbital, or propofol. So this was uh, the management of status epilepticus plus everything we learned about seizure today. I hope you enjoyed the lecture and any suggestions or any comments are welcomed. Don't forget to like and subscribe and if there is any topic you would want me to learn and present that would be great and please do leave suggestions below. Thank you very 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 much.